All right, guys, how's it going? It's Josh from Mode Step here, and today I'm here to talk to you guys about how I record vocals. I don't think there's been many people talk about how they re record vocals, so I thought I'd give you guys an as in depth tutorial to uh, exactly how I achieve the sound of my vocals. Sweet. We're gonna start off today with a tune. Um, it's a collaboration between us and Barely Alive, uh, and it's called Our Own Way. Um, I've already written the vocal, so it's just a case today of actually recording it, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I record it and how I layer my vocals in order to kind of create the effect that we get on that tune. So before we jump in, I'm gonna show you guys that you don't really need a whole bunch of expensive stuff to get quite an expensive sounding vocal. Um, all I'm using for this is my laptop, which granted is kind of expensive, but you could use any laptop and any sound interface. Uh, the interface that I'm using for this is down here. Um, the, you can show up a picture of what it is. It's called the Apogee One, which is a super cheap uh, one input sound card that I use just to monitor, but it's very high quality. And that one input is golden. It's much better than a lot of the other cheaper sound cards out there. Um, and my microphone here, which is um, an Aston microphone, uh, which I believe is also only a few hundred bucks um, and the quality you get out of it, it rivals some of the $2,000, $3,000 microphones out there. Um, and what I've got here as well is just like a reflection filter, which stops some of the uh, reverb in this room from getting to the microphone and a little pop filter, which stops the uh, P's and T's from um, ruining my recording. Um, but other than that, it's a cheap stand here. I've even got a cheap Amazon Basics table. Everything is bare minimum to get what I would consider like a studio class uh, vocal recording done. But even though I've just mentioned hundreds of dollars of equipment, that's also completely not necessary. You could go and get an even cheaper microphone, even cheaper interface. You could use a sock over a clothes hanger instead of this pop shield here. You could use mattresses surrounding you, duvets. You do what it takes to make it dry and obviously spending a tiny bit more, it does make a difference, but you don't have to do that. You could even use the microphone built into your MacBook if you really wanted to. Uh, I'm just talking here from my experience on what I prefer to use, but like I say, you could go and use any cheaper stuff to achieve almost the same thing. All right, so let's try and record a take. Put on the metronome. Light trails behind me Licking miles of waste of time Let's push things forward Keep our heads held high Time's passed, we've left we chose new paths We both got so much room to grow It's all we have But I know we can We both got so much room to grow So I've recorded in uh, the first uh, take of this vocal and I've thrown on my vocal rack. Uh, inside my vocal rack, I'll show you guys what's in here. We have a gate, which basically gets rid of the sound um, under a certain volume. So all these gaps here, they don't make it through. So it's just nice and silent. If there's any noise in the room or anything, it won't get picked up uh, because we've got the gate on there. This is my golden secret to getting good vocals right here. And it's a Waves plugin and it's called the Maserati VX1. I don't know what it does exactly. I think it's a combination of compression, EQing, um, maybe some multiband compression, but it's incredible. Um, I throw it on uh, with the compression turned up a bit, bass turned down. And I don't know whether it's my voice that works well with it, but it just seems to be the most ideal thing. Uh, we've got an EQ here with uh, an EQ shape, more cutting than anything else, uh, just areas that are probably going to be taken up by other things in the song. We have a tiny touch of OTT, which can be controlled uh, from this macro here. Um, and then we have 
some EQ, the same EQ to go after it as what went into it. So that's just pre and post EQ. And then another rack here that has all my reverbs and delays, which are all just stock uh, Ableton reverb and, and delays. Um, okay, so now I've shown you my vocal rack. This is how it sounds. I'm gonna turn the gate off for a moment because we've got some quiet bits here. Light trails behind me. So it sounds pretty good. Um, what I would usually do is um, at this point to get the perfect take is we use a system called comping and comping is basically where you record the same thing over and over and over and over again. And based on those uh, different takes, you would then select your favorite phrase out of every single one of those takes. So say we had five takes and uh, we liked the first word from the first take, the second word from the second take, etc., etc. We would then pick and choose to make the perfect take out of those five takes. So what I'm gonna do off camera is record, let's say three comps so that I can show you the comping process now. Cool, so now I have the three takes recorded. Um, let's go through those takes. Try and get everything nicely balanced. So I'll turn up the volume here where it doesn't look like it's quite as loud as the rest of it. And then we'll make ourselves a comp channel. And let's put these all in a folder. Vocals. Right, so I basically will play it and play all three different takes and decide which one is the right one to use. So let's do this with the first few things and then um, I'll skip to a time where I've done all of them for you. Light trails behind me. Not so good. Light trails oh, let's copy this vocal rack also onto all the channels. Light trails behind me. Not great. Light trails behind me. That'll do, we'll take that one. So then that one gets dragged down onto our comps channel and I will do that same process again, starting with the next phrase. Miles of waste time. Let's try number two. Miles of waste time. That's pretty good. And the last one. Miles of waste time. Let's take number two there. So as you can imagine, this can get a bit tedious if you have, for example, what I usually do is about eight takes of each thing that I'm trying to, uh, trying to get a good comp of. Obviously you wouldn't have to do this for backing vocals. This is mainly your, your main lead vocal, the thing that's right at the front and you wanna get it perfect. And the reason you wanna get it perfect is obviously because it's the thing that the listener's most listening to, but you also wanna make sure you get this comped and ready by the time you do your backing vocals because they will have to match this vocal perfectly. So um, we're gonna fast forward now. I'm gonna make a comp of what we've recorded so far. And um, yeah, bear with me. Lovely, so I have now got a full comp of this lead vocal. So what I will do is play it for you quickly. Light trail. And I'll mute the other ones. Light trails behind me. Let's get rid of some of those silences at the start end of the phrases. Cool, so that is our, uh, our comp so far. Now, let's get rid of all of these. Let's call these old versions. This is our lead comp, 
And now what I would like is to have, um, to make the lead vocal stronger, what I tend to do is record exactly the same thing and have it panned left and right at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is do another take of uh, that same phrase and I'm going to uh, show you how I will then pan it to make it, give it a much fuller, wider sound. Cool, so I've got two takes those. I'm gonna pan one to the left and one to the right. And now it should sound like this. Light trails behind me. Leaky miles of wasted time. As you can hear, it sounds a lot more um, deliberate and it sounds a lot more full in its sound. So um, what I'm now gonna do is show you some of the extra processing that I would do to this lead vocal. So. I'm going to uh, consolidate all of this to one piece of audio. Duplicate the lead channel. And this is done quite a lot in EDM stuff. Um, what you do is you pitch down the vocal as a multi-track and you do it an octave below the original. And what we'll do is we'll do two of those We'll set the uh, warp mode to complex pro. Um, and again, we'll pan these left and right. And we'll set the formant slightly different on each one. So it sounds like this. Light trails behind me. Leaky miles of waste of time. So as you can hear, it gives it a very unnatural but euphoric sound to the vocal. I tend to do this quite a lot just because in electronic music, it gives it a certain edge that you wouldn't even necessarily want in a pop vocal, but I like the sound of it. I do it quite a lot. Um, you could do some other extra tricks to it, so. Light trails behind me. Leaky miles of waste of time. Time. Maybe pitch that up an octave and have it delayed. So, time, time. Let's try that. Time. The time. That sounds cool. So, at this point, you're now working with the vocal, but you're doing it in a way that a producer might work with a synthesizer or a bass one shot. You now can create all sorts of different sounds that may sound like synthesizers just based on these vocal recordings. I think that's really key in filling the gaps um, in, in between your vocals. So it's quite important to get a strong vocal, but it's also important in songs where there's gaps in between the vocal to keep that same frequency going. Another technique I use is um, reverse delay. So for example, I would want the first uh, part where the vocal comes in for it to reverse in and then be prominent. So the way that I would do that Light trails behind me. I'll copy the channel again behind me. And I'll set a bunch of delays. So let's do this one to eight behind me. I'll set it fully to wet. Let's get rid of some of those frequencies. And then a big reverb as well. Now we've got a big tail on the end. I'll freeze that. I'll flatten it. And then what we do here is we reverse it like this and then set a fade in so it sounds like this. Light trails behind me. Leaky miles of waste of time. Let's add a few more layers to this. So over these sections, they're quite um, chorusy, so you would want definitely more than three vocals singing it. So 
So we would want that got so much room to grow to be a kind of a group vocal. So let's try and record and multi-track that a few times and see where we get with it. Let's call this one BV1 and let's put them in a BV's folder so we know where all our backing vocals are. Dim, dim, dim. All right. Got so much room to grow. Let's do that a whole bunch of times. Got so much room to grow. And now I'm going to sound totally stupid, but I'm going to try and do it the whole octave up in falsetto. So apologies how awful this is going to sound. But in context, it usually sounds pretty good. Probably sounded fucking horrible to you guys, but uh, you'll see. Let's do that one more time, so we have two. So much okay. So much and as you can see, I mean, the pitching's not great, but um, you can really hear how it fattens out the vocal, having all these different octaves stacked on top. And obviously I'd make sure those takes are slightly better and probably twice the amount. But that's the general thing is try and record as much as you possibly can and pan it around the different stereo field to make it sound like there's a chorus of people standing around you. One last thing that I do is um, once I've got my lead vocal is I create a delay channel and all that is is things that I want to have delays on. So let's listen to this. So if I want behind me to have a delay on it, I drop that down into the channel. And on this channel, we're just going to have our standard vocal rack, which is there, and our delays. So let's set up a delay of every uh, eight, and then let's put the EQ on it to get rid of some of it, sound a bit filtered as well to make it sound a bit further away, and then some reverb on top. So it sounds like this. So now it's as easy as just copy and pasting down onto this channel every time we want a delay. Let's push things forward. And that's pretty much it. That's a give or take how I would record vocals. Um, lots of comping, lots of, um, uh, I guess, recording of the same thing over and over again, um, and just layering and layering until it, until it sounds as deliberate and as fat as possible. Um, Auto-tune, if you can't sing too well, uh, definitely throw a tiny bit of auto-tune onto the lead vocal at the end with a really slow, actually I may as well do that for you guys now, why not? So uh, let's get the waves auto-tune. Auto That's called tune. So let's go with the mono one. Set the key of the song, which I believe for this is a minor. So I've set it to A minor and I would um, leave the note transition a bit kind of in the, in the halfway mark and make sure the speed is as quick as possible. Light trails behind me. And that will stop that kind of uh, T-Pain auto, uh, auto tune effect from happening. Uh, if you deliberately want that, you can make the note transition set that to zero and that's going to sound like Light trails behind me very t painy, but I try and avoid that, make it a bit more natural and set it kind of down the center. Light trails behind me. Licking us a waste of time. 
Let's push things forward Keep our heads held high and that's it. That is pretty much, give or take, a long, tedious process. Um, how I record my vocals, and specifically how I recorded the vocals for uh, this Barely Alive tune. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I hope it's been educational for you. Um, I hope my horrendous dry voice hasn't been too great for you guys. But um, yeah, if you like what you've seen, uh, make sure you comment. Um, I'd like to know what other things you'd like to see from us. Um, and big up for to Disciple for having us on. Um, yeah, make sure you cop all that good merch as always and big love to our Disciple fam. Goodbye.